Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the natural resources available to you in Cataclysm, as well as foraging. So, um, we're hungry and thirsty, and we've already talked that we have secured enough to eat and drink for a period of time. Looking at our water situation, I would say this is like two days worth of water. Um, and looking at our food situation, we could eat these conceivably for the next... Oh, I don't know, 20 days, 15 days, something like that. So we have enough food for quite a long time, although um, we're not very happy eating these rations and they make us thirsty, which is concerning. And again, uh, I would say that this water is enough for one and a half, maybe two days. So we're going to need water in the future and we're going to need uh, more food in the future, but at the moment we are okay. Um, so... Let's talk about foraging, because again, we have some downtime. It's only 1 p.m. in the game, and we kind of did not want to head into town until it's getting darker and we can move about a little bit safely. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But for now, we're going to head outside and we're going to look to gathering natural resources. Now, first and foremost, while this guy has popped up, let's talk about him. Um, you'll see here we can see a raccoon. And if we look at our compass, he is to our southeast. So if we head down... Oh, he's right here. Okay. So there's a raccoon. One of the um, first and foremost things that you're going to find in the wilderness is our animals. So you're going to find animals which can be killed and butchered for, for meat products. That includes, and, and other things as well, they, they will butcher for meat, fat, sinew generally, which can be used as thread or as a uh, cordage material, and they will uh, harvest for bones as well, which can be made into a broth or used for crafting. And then depending on the quality of your of your um, butcher, you may also get things like organs. Depending on the size of the animal, you may get lungs and brain and, and different organs that you can also cook um, and use for other, other purposes. So animals are a high priority target because meat has a lot of calories in it. So if you're short on food and you're, or you're starving to death, one of the best things for you is to eat meat because it contains a ton of calories. I believe it's like... Um, is it 400 per, per chunk of meat? Maybe 800? I really don't remember, but it's a sizable amount of calories. Um, you know, it's one of those things I look at day to day in Cataclysm eating meat, and I never really uh, put away in the back of my brain how much calorie um, content there is in, in a piece of meat. Um, but so I've, animals are an easy one to, to identify as valuable. The problem is, say, the raccoon, probably going to run away from you. Did, you didn't run away from me? Well, let's get our spike out. Uh, once we, he's dead. I was going to say once we hit him, he'll run away, but never mind, he is dead. Uh, so in order to butcher animals, uh, we step over them and press the capital B key, shift B for butcher, and it will bring up the butcher menu and it says, what would you like to disassemble? Now this is only available if you have a butchering tool in your inventory. We have the pocket knife, which if we investigate, has an 11 butchering quality. This is pretty subpar. Um, there are some items that have negative butchering quality, and what that means is that they can still be used for butchering, but they're going to give you much less material when you butcher. So when you're looking at a butchering tool, you're looking at the butchering quality. I think the highest is 25, um, and then the average is probably like 15 to 17. I would say most butcher items have like 15 to 20 on them. Uh, and then I think like their the surgical scalpels is like a butchering of 25 or some absurdly high number. I really don't remember. So we do have a butchering tool. So we can hit the capital B menu and it'll ask us what we want to butcher. We'll hit enter and we brings up this butchering menu. I wasn't going to do this in this episode, but we found an animal that we killed immediately. So from top to bottom, quick butchery is like, hey, um, I don't have the proper tools available. I just really quickly want to cut up this corpse and get a little bit of meat. You'll see it displays the times on the right-hand side and the type of butchery on the left-hand side. There are also hotkeys to quickly do this, but I almost always use the arrow keys in this menu. So quick butchery will give us a very limited amount of material back, so we'll get less meat and less valuable stuff, but it's quick and it has the benefit of being able to be done pretty much at any opportunity. As long as you have light, you can quick butcher. Full butchery is a, a more advanced technique. You'll see that it requires a rope and a tree or a butchering rack, as well as a flat surface like a table or tarp um, and quality tools. You can't, I, I think full butchering doesn't work if you have really bad, like negative tools. Yields are plentiful and varied, but it is time consuming. So our best, and it displays our best tools um, 
information as well of what our butchery quality is when we when we look at these menus. Uh, full butchery requires a lot of tools for large corpses, but small corpses can still be full butchered. If you kill a squirrel or a mouse um, or a fish, you can full butcher even though you don't have those tools. I'm not sure if that applies also to the raccoon. I'm not sure how big a raccoon is. Next, we have the ability to field dress and skin a corpse. This is a bug at the moment. Normally, field dress would strip the organs out of the carcass so it would rot more slowly. Skinning a corpse would remove its skin if you were just looking for leather. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with this. I remember this was a bug quite a while ago. I thought they had fixed that. So some corpses display as having no organs or skin. I don't know how to fix that. Sorry, I don't think there's a workaround. But that's what that would do if you were able to do this. Field dressing would strip out the organs and prepare that corpse so that it would rot less quickly. And then skinning a corpse would remove its skin component, which for most animals is leather. Next, we have the ability to quarter a corpse. I was under the impression you could only quarter after field dressing, but that does not appear to be the case. Basically, this will uh, cut the corpse into quarters, which would make them more transportable. So let's say we're out and we fight a moose. We can't carry a moose back to base, but we have a full butcher set up back at base. We have the, the butcher rack and the table and everything set up for full butchering. Well, we can't full butcher the moose in the field, so in, and we can't carry it back to base, so what we could do is quarter the corpse so that we could bring the quarters and carry them in our inventory. Um, just, you know, pick up a quarter or two and hold those in our inventory, which would fit, which we could actually carry, take those back to base and then full butcher those. So quartering is handy, but I almost never do that. If I'm out and about and I kill a, a moose or something, the quick butcher gives so much meat from such a large animal that it's almost never relevant to try and quarter it and carry it back to base. I would just full butcher carry what I could and leave the rest um, because mostly meat is not that hard to come by. If you go out on a hunting trip, there's a chance you won't find anything, but there are enough um, domesticated animals that show up. So a lot of the times, I know it's an unfortunate thing to talk about, but uh, in Cataclysm, most of my meat comes from dogs that roam in packs. Sometimes they're wild dogs like uh, wolves or um, you know whatever, but so a lot of the time it's like, Here's a herd of bulldogs that uh, were domesticated at one point and are roaming the countryside. Probably going to just kill them and eat them for meat because it's the apocalypse and you really take a meal. You know, it's an old rule if you were ever a soldier, uh, you know, back in like World War II, they would say you eat whenever you have the opportunity because you never know how long you'll be out there not able to eat for the next, you know, four days or whatever. So you always eat when you have the opportunity. If you find a horde of chihuahuas, put them down turn them into food. It's just that simple. I know it's a weird thing to talk about. Um, as per real life, I would never do that in real life unless I was in a very, very desperate situation, uh, literally starving to death. I would never kill an animal. But um, in the Cataclysm, it's a game and it's the apocalypse, so I think it's okay. Next, we have Dismember. You're rarely ever going to use this on animals. Dismembering lets you... So basically, we haven't covered this yet, but zombies in Cataclysm revive after a period of time unless you dismember the corpse or you butcher the corpse in some way or you smash the body to the point where it can't reconstruct itself. So dismembering is like, hey, I killed a zombie that I can't smash, like acid zombies splash when you smash them. We'll talk about all this when we get there. Um, and you would want to dismember them. And you'll see this is very, very fast. Um, you do not want to do this because you don't get materials from that it's not going to give you a bunch of meat and a bunch of fat this is just i'm trying to destroy the corpse as quickly as possible and then finally we have dissect corpse this is something different um, this is not a standard butcher this requires an implement with fine cutting you'll see down here it, it says our best tool has fine cutting this is you literally taking the time to dissect the corpse you only really do this if that particular creature has something you need to dissect it for. So there are bionics in the game, and certain enemies have bionics in them. In fact, it references right here, bionic implants. And the point is to properly dissect the body so that you can harvest safely the bionic from their body. So you really only dissect things that you know you need to dissect. Otherwise, don't do this. I believe this does give some meat and stuff, but it's in such small quantities that it's almost never valuable to do that. There's also a, quote, discrete organ, which I believe is a magicalism thing. It may be a vanilla thing. It used to be there was a pheromone thing, and I don't know if that was removed or... 
I, I don't know how what I, I don't find them, so I don't think that it's super relevant. So dissecting is really just for CBMs. So we've got this raccoon that we've killed, and we want to harvest him for as much meat as possible. Now, on the negative side, we don't actually have the ability to store this meat for any length of time. We don't have a freezer, we don't have a fridge or something that would let us um, safely hold this meat for later and increase its shelf life. So meat generally has a shelf life of about one day. And so even if we full butcher and get tons of meat, we can't do a lot with it because it's just going to go bad. So I think quick butchery would be fine here, but we're going to try full butchery because I think it's small enough that we can still full butcher it. We spotted a raccoon. Stop butchering. No, I don't think it's hostile. So we'll just ignore him and we finish harvesting the raccoon and you'll see we got butchery refuse and scraps of meat it's really unfortunate um butchering i believe is based on survival which uh our survival is very very low so we got very low yields of meat and we didn't even get any chunks of meat all we got is butchery refuse which is something you don't really want to eat you'll see it has negative 20 well it's raw as well i don't think you can cook it it's basically yeah, mess of dirt, excreta, excreta, um, filth, let's just say filth, connective tissue, and bits of matter like hair and claws. Obviously not stuff that we want to eat. Scraps of meat are edible. Uh, this is a tiny scrap of edible meat. It's not much, but it'll do in a pinch. Uh, you'll see it only has 30 calories. It's a very tiny portion of meat. Um, what we were looking for was were called chunks of meat, which are sizable pieces of meat. Now, raccoons are... If you've ever seen a raccoon in real life, they range from really tiny to like pretty beefy, like the size of my wiener dog. Um, so there definitely is meat on the corpse. It's just that we failed to successfully really butcher this body. And so all we got was scraps of meat. Now these are edible. We can go inside and start a fire and, and we can look components, scrap. Nope, scraps, scrap of meat. And you'll see we can make um, we can cook the scraps of meat, uh, which will give us an item that has 51 calories on consumption. I don't think that's correct because the meat said 30, so it's probably 30. Um, we could turn them into nachos with cheese, but we don't have cheese. We're lactose and am I lactose? I don't remember if I took that trade or not. Um, and uh, tortilla chips, which we don't have, or we can make meat nachos out of them. So we could take them back and cook them for a few bits of calorie. In fact, we're hungry. Why don't we? Let's go ahead and start a fire and we'll make a scrap of meat, cooked scrap of meat. We'll make four of them. Oh, they cook really fast. Why don't we make like eight of them? Dispose of our stick. Yes. So now we have scraps of meat in our inventory. If we go to the eat menu, they do have 51 calories. It's weird that the uncooked uh, scrap of meat has 30 and the cooked one has 51. That's most likely an oversight. They probably are meant to match up. Um, but we'll go ahead and eat some. We, we don't really want to accidentally eat our other meat. So we're going to go ahead and drop the scraps over here. And we'll come back and we'll eat these. And you'll see as we eat, our hunger went away because now our stomach has some contents in it. So it's just listed as peckish, which means, hey, you know, you have food in your stomach, but you could probably eat. Um, and you know what? We're just going to eat all of these because they have a very tiny volume which means they're not going to fill up our stomach that much. And they have a pretty good ratio of calories to, to volume. So it's a chance for us to get a bunch of calories in our system that we didn't have previously. In fact, I think I'm just going to cook uh, pretty much all of these and cook them. And uh, let's look at their spoilage timer. And this is what I was talking about with meat. Even after being cooked, it is a nominal shelf life of one day. So in one day, this is going to go bad and no longer be... Um, consumable. So I think I'm just going to eat a ton of these because they're so tiny. We ate all of them and you see we're still peckish and that is because the volume of our stomach is still so low. We are still thirsty. We're in minimal pain. This is now because we are very hot. There's currently some bugginess going on with Cataclysm where being inside with a fire is incredibly hot. Um, it's, you, you know, it kind of makes sense in your brain like oh, I'm near a fire. Of course I'm warm. But like it's out of control high, uh, especially in the summertime, you basically cannot be indoors with a fire. So to me, that's a bug. I doubt that that's intended. I don't know if it's actually considered a bug, but it's definitely probably not intended. Um, and you'll see we have all these negatives relating to our, our heat. And in fact, being so hot has put us in pain now, which we talked about in the last episode about how pain interferes with your ability to move. So let's get outside. In fact, let's extinguish this fire. 
so that we don't have that heating up and you'll see we immediately start falling our temperature starts falling anyway we never talked about you know foraging which was the whole point of this episode but we got butchering out of the way butchering is an important thing as well and again we can't eat the refuse so that's just going to leave get staying behind sometimes i like to carry corpses away from the base i just don't like having them nearby in fact here's an example of us spotting a dog that is a prime candidate for harvesting for meat um we've spotted a pitbull. we're going to ignore him for now in fact where no don't uh stop hauling where is this pitbull pitbull mix is 60 tiles to our east we'll talk about the look menu when we get into town um if we go near them, there's a chance that he might become hostile. If he gets injured, he will definitely become hostile. It's just the way that the creatures work in Cataclysm. Um, so we're going to just stay away from him. We're not going to worry about him, although that is a prime candidate for another butcher target. So we do know that there are dogs in the area if we need to to salvage more food if in a, in a, in a pinch. So animals are an easy example of um, the natural bounty of Cataclysm. But uh, let's talk about other parts of it in a previous episode we smashed a boulder for rocks those are things that exist in the forest and in field areas so like if we look up oh we're literally right next to town um there are big areas let's see if we can spot one these big open areas are just listed as fields rocks and things can appear in them but the, a lot of the trees and stuff don't so you're mostly looking at grass and um like the occasional rock and flower in the forest, obviously, we'll see right here, there's a lot of dense scatter of terrain. And it ranges wildly in what it is. Mostly we're seeing trees. You know, we'll see here's a walnut tree. Here's a blackjack oak. Here's an oak tree, willow tree, pine tree, uh, dead tree, dead pine tree, etc. There are a lot of trees. So trees are a good source of uh, wood, obviously. If you get an axe, you can cut down a tree then uh, chop the tree into logs and then chop the logs into planks and anything that you might need. So trees are a valuable resource, but essentially they are everywhere in the game. So you never really have to go looking for them. These small trees uh, are listed as young trees when we actually look at them. These can be smashed for uh, long sticks, which is occasionally valuable or sometimes nothing. So here we got long sticks and these can be butchered into um, heavy sticks. So if you're ever in need of long or heavy sticks, those small trees are the way to go. Next, we have these uh, tall grass tiles. These actually slow down your movement when you step onto them. So they're something to watch out for. Um, and they can be smashed, I think, for... There's nothing there. You cannot smash those. My mistake. Next, um, so the other value of trees is that certain trees will produce fruit or nuts uh, as the game progresses. So we're currently in spring. Spring is a lean season, so there's not a lot of natural, natural forestables. Uh, okay, let's try this again. Natural harvestables uh, are not super available in springtime. Winter, there's essentially nothing to harvest. Uh, in the summertime, the fruit trees will produce fruit for the most part. I believe there are also fruit trees that produce in the uh, autumn, but it's primarily in the summertime when you'll start seeing apple trees, peach trees, things like that blossoming. And this will change in this tile set. The tree sprites will change to show that they have fruit on them. There are also bushes that produce fruit. So like here is a strawberry bush in the summertime. Um, the bushes also will produce a lot of berries, uh, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, things like that. In the autumn, there are still fruit trees available, I believe, but primarily you're going to discover nuts. So there will be trees that will harvest for nuts, um, which are extremely good. So primarily the fruit will spoil between like, I don't know, probably the shortest berry timer is probably like two days. But for the most part, fruits will last between two days and a couple weeks, um, depending on what the fruit is. And you can do stuff with it to extend the lifespan of it and whatnot. Nuts are indefinite, so a lot of the nuts in the game will just last forever. It's a very overpowered uh, thing is to forge a lot of nuts and basically just survive on them for the rest of your life, which uh, really bothers me because nuts contain a lot of fat, which means that they go rancid and they will also dry out over time. So I'm not really a fan of how they've made all nuts pretty much indefinite. I don't really like that, hoping that will change in the future. But as of this recording... Once you get to autumn and you harvest a lot of nuts, you are set forever. Um, you can turn those into to food for the rest of your game. 
Now, in addition to trees and bushes producing, there are also these tufts of grass. If we hover over them, they are listed as underbrush in this menu. Underbrush can be searched for natural foraged items as well. So we have a very low survival skill. Foraging for stuff in underbrush uses the survival skill to determine whether or not you actually find something. So we're not going to find very much, but if we press the E key, which is the examine key that I use all the time to interact with things, uh, and we select that, we will automatically search uh, for any forageables that might be in um, these these bush these little underbrush things so if we just move around and search we'll find something eventually and this is an early game so that time we found a casing which is not particularly valuable uh and we'll try to search as many as we can in the early game if you're desperate for for foods um you can find some stuff in the underbrush there we found a rock but for the most part it's not going to be high calorie foods we need to be really careful as we move around as well we don't want to go up to the prison and we don't want to walk into town so we'll just forage a little bit more. Maybe we can find an actual food item there. We found some withered plants. I believe that these um, can be used for making cordage as well. I always mix up the, the faded plants. Found a splinter of wood. None of these things so far have been edible. So we're going to just continue deeper into the forest. Again, we need to be a little careful. There are animals and things that will spawn in the forest that could hurt us. But for the most part, we don't need to be super worried about that. Um... So yeah, we can forage these to find items. We're only finding non-edibles, which is a little bit disappointing. Normally you will find wild vegetables, which is what I spawned in our previous episode, just to look at uh, a food with a shelf life. They have very low calories, but they are food if you're really struggling for food. Uh, additionally, there are plants located around uh, the map. You'll see here we have a lily. Um, and this is just a bush. Here's another flower. It's a spurge flower. Um, and you'll see that they're located around. There are many different of these flowers. There's a dahlia um, that spawn in the game. If you interact with them, you can pluck them. So here we have a dandelion, which we can pick. And when you do that, it automatically puts them into your inventory if you have room. So here we have dandelions in our inventory. Collection of freshly picked yellow flowers. In their current raw state, they are quite bitter. So you see that we could eat these, although it will make us unhappy to do so. Dandelions can also be made, I don't know if we have the recipe, they can be made into, uh, oh, dandelion greens. We didn't get any greens, we got regular dandelions. We'll become mushy. Why, um, dandelion? No, uh, component dandelion. Why can I make something with dandelion greens, but I don't have the recipe to make the dandelion greens? interesting uh whatever probably our skill is just too low um we would need oh why do we have a one in cooking oh because we cooked all that meat our cooking leveled up so probably either we have too low of a cooking or you require a special book sometimes these survival recipes in the game like cooking pine needle tea that kind of thing um they are only available through having a specific book so like we could go over here and harvest from the pine tree and it will give us pine boughs as well as pine cones. Pine cones can be converted into pine nuts, which are edible if you're in the early game and you're struggling for food. Um, I know a lot of people use pine nuts. I think they're a little OP. We don't even have the recipe for them. Um, but they can be converted later in the game. And then pine boughs can also be used to make pine needle tea, which is pretty valuable. But again, you need a book to do that. Um, so you can get a lot, and you'll see here is just a pine bough laying out in the wilderness as well. Um, so searching can reward you. So here we found a garlic bulb. This is something else that has an indefinite... Oh no, it does go bad in three seasons. Okay, that's fine. We're going to grab this um, because garlic can be used in cooking recipes. So you can find a lot of stuff. The uh, forage table, the, the table that it rolls on to determine what you get, uh, is quite big. There's a lot of things that you can find. Here we found another pine cone. Um, and once you level survival, every time we search, we're leveling our survival. You see, we're almost at level one. Um, as you level survival, you will find things more frequently and it will be a lot easier to forage. I see you down there, raccoon. Here we found some wild vegetables, which we'll take back to base as well. These can be eaten raw as well, but you'll see a lot of these things make us unhappy. And I believe it used to be you could get parasites from wild vegetables. I don't think that's in the game anymore. 
but it's something to be wary of. In general, you should always cook everything. There's really no reason to eat raw food unless you're literally starving to death and you don't have any fire tools. Um, here we got some thyme, which is an herb we can use in cooking recipes. So there's quite a lot of stuff that you can find out in the woods. Now, the final thing that I want to mention uh, about natural resources that are easily found is water. Here you'll see there is a puddle of water in the forest. Now, this is an easy place to find water. They're just random puddles. If we look up, most forest tiles have a couple random puddles around. So those function as infinite sources of water. They never go away. So you can use them to reliably pick up water if you're in an area where you can't get it. Um, and that applies to any water tile in Cataclysm. They're always infinite. So if we find a swimming pool, that is an infinite source of water that we can then boil that water and safely drink. If we find uh, toilets are, are not infinite because they're not really a tile, they're inside of the toilet. Um, but you can find tiles in the forest, you can find river tiles, you can find all sorts of things that are, are infinite sources of water. So here we actually have, uh, we wouldn't do this, but if we interact with it, it will give us the option to drink from it. I recommend not doing that. It will give you food poisoning most of the time uh, if you drink unpurified water. Additionally, we can pour this into a container and take it with us back to base. So we picked up some gallon jugs in our search of the, the building. We could bring a gallon jug up here, fill it up with water, take it back to our base and purify it. That's the thing you'll be doing 90% of the time. I don't think pouring on the ground does anything because it's like an infinite, yeah, clearing out the shallow water would take forever. So currently there's no way to deal with that. I think in the uh, menu water, you can fill, yeah. If we wanted to, we could fill that up so that it's no longer a water tile. There's really no reason to do that. And then uh, the only other raw material that you're gonna commonly be looking for is clay. Clay appears as gray, gray lumps in the uh, world. It's a gray circle. I honestly, I never know where to look for them. I just find them and I don't really need clay. So it's really not a big deal. Uh, the other thing to mention, I believe that these pits, if you walk near them, there's a chance you will fall into them. And if you don't have a ro rope, you can get stuck in them. That used to be true. I haven't had that happen in a long time. Uh, I'd imagine that's still a danger. So be careful uh, moving around the pits. And again, the flowers have various uses. Um, some of them, once you get further in the game, certain flowers can help you uh, like make aspirin, for instance, I think requires bark from one of these trees. Um, I think uh, painkillers, opi opiate painkillers come from poppies and things like that. So you will learn as you go in the game what you need to look for and what you don't need to look for. Foraging gets more valuable as you level up your survival. Water is generally available in forest tiles. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. Um, some trees are interactable year long. Some are only interactable. So like here we could pick this birch tree and get birch bark. But if we came over to say the willow, no, we can pick the willow. I'm looking for a fruit tree. Any of you fruit, fruit trees, oak tree. Well, you don't have anything, right? Yeah, oak trees, nothing can be harvested in this current season. In s autumn, you can harvest oak trees, I think. Um, and so in the springtime, you, you don't get a ton of forageables. In the summertime, there's tons of fruit. Uh, autumn is a lot of, is like the nut season. Animals are good for meat. I think we've covered a lot about the natural bounty of Cataclysm. And we, could, of course, could head back and cook our food if we wanted to. Um, although we ate so much meat that I don't think that that's a big deal. So let's just go ahead and drop all of our stuff. So we clear out our inventory a little bit. And I think we're getting ready to head off into town just to get a look. It's 2 p.m. The sun goes down. It depends. But I think by 9 p.m. it's usually pretty dark. And um, yeah, I think we'll start heading up into town soon. For now, that's going to do it. Hopefully you learned something about the natural world of Cataclysm. And uh, I'll be back with more tutorial content in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.